When we're looking at creating a food forest and we want to create an ecosystem that can sustain itself in as many ways as possible, one of the things we have to focus on is how does our garden, our food forest, our landscape get its nutritional needs, its nitrogen, its minerals? Um, how do we create systems that are self-resilient? And one of the ways we do that is we plant specific kinds of plants that actually support and build fertility in the landscape itself. Um, this is one right here. This is called a Russian olive, which in some ecosystems is invasive, it's not invasive in this one. So it's the kind of thing you need to check, always check to see if a plant is invasive in your ecosystem. And this is a nitrogen fixer that is also creates an edible berry, is a great habitat plant, is highly medicinal, creates an antioxidant cancer fighting fruit. It attracts bees in the springtime, in the early springtime, and you could cut this to the ground and it'll sprout back up from the stump. Now, one of the ways that we manage these, I call these fertility pumps. So all throughout the landscape, all throughout the food forest, we have these different fertility pumps. It might maybe a tree like this, or it might be a shrub like a lupin, but they're always nitrogen fixers and they're plants that we can cut back hard and that will stimulate new growth. And every time we do that, when I come in here and I cut back all of this material, I literally just harvested my own mulch. And here's one of the, here's one of the warnings I want to, I want to give you is that, you know, a lot of us jumpstart our gardens and our landscapes by bringing material in from offsite. We bring in compost from offsite and wood chips from offsite. And that's a great way to jumpstart your system. It's a great way to bring in carbon. But for long term resilience and ecological sustainability, how do we generate that sort of fertility right on site? And this is, there's a whole world to, that we could talk about now about soil microbiology, about plant exudates, of all that soil science is taking place here in the landscape. But one of the things that we need is we need organic matter, we need this biomass, and we want this nitrogen fixing material. So here it took me uh, two seconds to harvest this. Now I just chop this up. This is it. This is the work folks. It's the chop and drop method and you know, over all of the decades since people have been doing this, there's been a lot of speculation, does chop and drop work and all these things. But in the end, we're growing our own biomass. We're growing our own mulch. Think about how little amount of a carbon footprint it takes. I didn't have to haul this in. I didn't have to dry, drive it in. There's no gasoline required. It's taking this energy that you see right here and I'm literally growing my own mulch to build biomass. Now, when this breaks down, it's going to release nutrients into the, into the soil it's, that it will be available to other plants and all that microbiology, the bacteria and the fungi, protozoas, um, the worms, all of them are going to help break it down and turn it into rich, um, nutrient rich soil. Now, one of the things about this um, that often comes up is, well, if you just leave it on the surface, a lot of that material is going to gas off. A lot of that nitrogen will gas off to the atmosphere. You're not going to get it into the soil. And that's true to a degree. And that's why often what we do is we'll cut back our, we'll chop and drop a bunch of nitrogen rich material. And then maybe we'll grab some other kind of biomass like comfrey, which is a mineral rich material. And we'll actually layer that on top of the, uh, on top of the chopped uh, green manure plant. And I can keep harvesting in the garden. I can keep harvesting all kinds of biomass from these plants. Deciduous leaves from the maple tree is a great mulch. And we can keep layering this material on without having to bring that material from off site. Now, one of the things that's going to happen with this one, because it's grown kind of big, is we're going to cut it back really hard next year. There's two cherry trees growing on the other side. What's going to happen is when we cut that back, there's going to be a bit of a root die off. And that root die off is going to slough organic matter off into the soil, which will be fed on by all those microorganisms. And this is a pump of fertility, a regenerating 
pump of fertility because it can grow up again and we'll do it again and again and again and again. So we're pumping the ground with organic matter, we're harvesting mulch for the surface, and meanwhile we're using a plant that has a whole array of different functions. Useful plants are key to having a multitude of different harvests. So you can, if you can choose a plant that builds soil and provides food and provides medicine, that's going to be a better choice than a plant that just does one of those functions. So that's part of our strategy in reducing the amount of labor, reducing the amount of inputs um, in to, to build and grow this food for us, and also increase that fecund fertility and food uh, to keep this system thriving for the long term.